Welcome to Mount Haguro, the first stop on the Dewa Sanzan journey of rebirth. Mount Haguro represents the world of the present, where we overcome the troubles of the current world. The other two Dewa Sanzan mountains, Mount Gassan and Mount Yudono, represent the world of the afterlife, or the past, and the world of the future. Since ancient times, traversing the three Dewa Sanzan peaks has been known as the journey of rebirth. As those who are able to cross the three peaks come out with a feeling of euphoria akin to being reborn. And Mount Haguro marks the official start. Hey, good morning. Um, good morning to Kotaro as well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to be climbing the stone stairway barefoot. Because um, I feel like it. <laughs> so, why don't we? Check it out. All good journeys to the Dewa Sanzan begin in the Shukubo, purpose-built pilgrim lodges that provide Shōjin Kessai purification through Shōjin Ryori cuisine, amulets, prayers, and even the garments of the Yamabushi. Mount Haguro and the Dewa Sanzan are currently governed by Dewa Sanzan Shrine, a Shinto entity. Up until the Shinbutsu Hanzenrei, the Kami and Buddha's separation order of 1868. Mount Haguro was a primarily Tendai sect Buddhist mountain with Buddhist gods living in harmony with their Shinto Kami manifestations. I made an entire video about this, which you can find here. But what you should know is that at the time, there was widespread destruction of Buddhist artifacts all over Japan, including on Mount Haguro. In an effort to stave off any additional attacks and to stop the destruction, the Dewa Sanza were forcibly switched to Shintoism. Thankfully, the destruction stopped early enough so that we can still very much enjoy what is an amazing piece of history. The red Zuishimon gates mark the entrance into the famous cedar forest and stone stairway. These gates are a symbol of Mount Haguro's time as a Buddhist sanctuary, as they held Daijin and Fujin, the Buddhist gods of thunder and wind, respectively. Nowadays, however, the Zuishimon gates hold statues of two Shinto deities, deities preventing calamity and pestilence from intruding past the gate. Mount Haguro's stone stairway amongst the cedar forest is one of the real highlights of this extraordinary peak, and the 2,446 steps provide a great challenge for those looking to test their mettle. There are 585 cedar trees lining the path with many planted around the same time the stone stairway was built in the early 17th century. This means that some of the trees are reaching their natural age and have started to rot from the inside. The ascent up Mount Haguro actually begins with a descent and this is by design. This first descent represents going down into hell. So this is the first descent that we've made and you can see around us there are these shrines. These shrines are called Masha and each one used to hold its own Buddha but during the Meiji Restoration they got rid of all the Buddha and they replaced it with the equivalent Kami. This one here used to have Enmasama, a Buddha who would judge whether you were worthy of heading on up into the mountains or not. We just came down this this long stairway and if you look can you see this you can see the shape of a cup on the whole stairway right up to the top of the mountain there are a lot of carvings um, I'm not sure how many there are but it's said that if you can find 18 you can have one wish granted and if you can find 33 you can have any wish Granted. And there are many different types of carvings as well. For example, a Yamabushi or um, Tokukuri, which is a gourd. Uh, also, I've seen a lotus flower and lots of little sake cups like this one. So when you come here, be sure to look out for the carvings. Once past this first group of master shrines, you will come across a red bridge called the Shinkyo Bridge. This bridge crosses the Haraigawa River, which literally means Exorcism River. As in the past, this is where monks would perform purification rituals to exercise their misfortune and prevent national calamity. 
Suganotaki Falls is another interesting spot. This waterfall is actually man-made, using water flowing off Mount Gassan. The waterfall used to be called Fudo no Taki after Fudo Myowo, the immovable wisdom king, an important deity in Japanese Buddhism that you will see all over the country, especially near waterfalls. This is Jiji Sugi, the grandfather cedar. Said to be over 1,000 years old, with a 10.5 meter circumference at the base, Jiji Sugi, the grandfather cedar, is the biggest and oldest cedar on Mount Haguro. There used to be a grandma cedar as well, but unfortunately the grandma cedar passed away about 100 years ago. I mentioned earlier, but some of the cedar trees are actually rotting from the inside. And so I'm part of a group that analyzed each of the cedar trees and the ones that are at danger of falling, we cut. Especially the ones around the five-story pagoda because they might actually fall and hit the five-story pagoda, so. This is Mount Hagoro's five-story pagoda. Rumor has it that a famous samurai named Taira no Masakado built Mount Hagoro's original five-story pagoda between 931 and 938. However, according to the Chronicles of Mount Hagoro, the current iteration was rebuilt in 1372 by chief priest of Mount Hagoro at the time, Daihoji Basauji. This means Mount Hagoro's five-story pagoda survived the widespread destruction of Buddhist artifacts during the Meiji Restoration. This originally Buddhist monument now stands in the middle of Shinto grounds, and it really is a miracle that it is still standing today. In Buddhism, each of the five floors represents a different element, earth, water, fire, wind, and void, which collectively represent the universe. Five-story pagodas are typically built in prominent locations within temple complexes. Mount Hagoro's five-story pagoda is rare in that it was built in the middle of a forest at the base of the mountain. This is because the five-story pagoda originally marked the fifth month of gestation on the Mount Hagoro journey of rebirth. At 29.4 meters, Mount Hagoro's five-story pagoda is not tall by pagoda standards. The pagoda was built using zero nails or even varnish to help it try to blend in with its surroundings. The roofs of five-story pagodas typically get smaller as you go up. And while this is still true for Mount Hagoro's five-story pagoda, it is much less noticeable. This is in an effort to counteract the heavy snow that falls annually. Less visible is the central pillar that originally ran the length of the pagoda and helps counteract against earthquakes, a centuries-old technology that was more recently used in Tokyo's sky tree. Each year, in the middle of winter, the people from Torge, the area Mount Hagoro lies in, climb through the middle of the tower, pop out at the top, and diligently clear the snow off the top. It's thanks to the efforts of the townspeople that we too are able to enjoy this architectural masterpiece. So there are three there are three main slopes on Mount Hagoro. This is the second, and it is the steepest as well. But once you reach the top, there is the Ninosaka Chaya, the Ninosaka Tea House, and that marks the halfway point. This is the Ninosaka Tea House. It's a really good spot to stop and get some extra energy for the rest of the climb. Uh, we got, it's called Tokoro Ten. This spot here used to be a temple. Got probably the best view from Mount Hagoro. Gohonbo Ato, the remains of Gohonbo. And Gohonbo was a temple. I heard that there were like 5,000 monks living in this temple. It was quite a big one. And then the Buddhist purge happened in the 1870s and got rid of it. This whole path basically was lined with shrines and temples and stuff. A bit like Koya san, Mount Koya. But these days it's there's only so many left. So this is the base of the, the third slope. This is the third slope just here. Uh, and up there is Minamidani, the southern valley. This area is called Minamidani, the southern valley. 
This is where Matsuo Basho stayed um, when he was riding the narrow road to the deep north, Okuno Hosomichi. They say he was aiming, this is what he was aiming for, the Diva Sanzan. And he came up the old Hagoro road. From this spot, before there were the cedar trees, you could see Mount Gasa. Matsuo Basho wrote a very famous haiku here, which talks about the scent, the smell of the snow. And because of that, Minami Dani, this tiny valley, has become known as one of the top 100 scents of Japan. It really helps you get an image for things captured inside the poetry. So, thanks to Matsuo Basho. I think the temple might have been quite big, even. You can still make out the foundations of the temple. So, this is a 90 degree corner with stones as well. Old buildings just sit on top of the ground. It's the same as the Shukubo actually. This is a really beautiful spot. You just sit here and take it all in. This tree here, this cedar, uh, I think 2017, um, there was a very windy day and the cedar was, it was rotting from the inside and it felt and I don't know if you can tell but there's quite a narrow gap here where Kotaro is standing so the tree fell and it went right smack bang on top of this shrine Haniyahime Jinja Shrine, the master and so this Haniyahime Shrine is the newest Thankfully they were able to rebuild the shrine, but we can't do anything about the, the tree, unfortunately. And so we're doing all that we can to help protect these trees from falling and keep the cedar forest for the next generations as well. Prince Hachiko Shrine is dedicated to the founder of the Dewa Sanza, Prince Hachiko, who declared the mountains open for worship in 593. This is Dewa Sanzan Shrine at the top of Mount Hagoro. Dewa Sanzan Shrine is housed inside a building called Sanjingo Saiden, literally the collective whole of the three kami. During the winter, Mount Gassan and Mount Irono shrines become inaccessible, so their kami are moved here meaning that we are able to worship the three kami year-round. Originally constructed as Jakkoji Temple in 1818, Sanjin Saiden has the thickest thatch roof in all of Japan to counteract all the snow that falls here. Although it may not look like much, directly in front of Dewa Sanzan Shrine is one of the most intriguing spots on the whole Dewa Sanzan. The Kagami Ike, literally mirror pond, is named after the hundreds of bronze mirrors that were excavated there, some of which can be seen in the nearby Dewa Sanzan History Museum, but also as far away as the British Museum in London and the Met in New York. This means that these mirrors were stolen and sold on the black market. This bell was donated to the temple for their efforts in praying against the Mongolian invasion, um, the original Kamikaze. I've also heard that a dragon flew out of the Kagami Ike at that time and flew over to where the Mongolians would have crashed uh, near Kyushu. We're in Dewa Sanzan Shrine and I'm just going to ask for a prayer. Um, I've given one to Kotaro as well. But, uh, so you come to this reception here and just ask for Gokito and fill out this form with the amount. There are different prayers that you can have and your address and name. They could probably help you. Just wait for your time for the prayer to begin and you go into the main hall and pray. Saikan in the former Kezoin temple has provided generations of Yamabushi mountain ascetics all they needed for training. Altars for rituals, shoji and yori, shiroshozoku garments for purification and of course, accommodation. 
This is the Tokushinoma. Actually, the Emperor of Japan is stayed in this room. That's the symbol of the Emperor. Chrysanthemum. It's actually quite a special room. I'm special. These days, anyone can stay in Saika and enjoy Dewa Sanzan Shojin Yori, one of the main reasons why Tsuruoka City became Japan's only UNESCO certified creative city of gastronomy in 2014. Due to being Shinto, not Buddhist in nature, Dewa Sanzan Shojin Yori sometimes includes fish or even meat. Now it's time to head back down the mountain. If you want more information, I've written a very in-depth article about Mount Haguro at timbunting.com slash Haguro. I also recommend that you check out the Haguro Kodo, the hidden side of Haguro. Details of the Haguro Kodo are also in the article. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Kakite!